All right, what is up, everyone? This is Dubby Drums here. Um, I got a request in my comments a while ago to make a video kind of like this, focusing on each element and um, discussing which path is the superior one for each and just kind of going over a review of each figurine. So I thought I'd do that. And so I thought we could start it off where the poster that I bought from Swap Force starts at, which is magic up here. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to just start reading through the guidebook and um, talking about the paths and which is better, which is worse, and my thoughts on the figurine in general. And then I will also include um, Ninjini, Voodoo, and Wrecking Ball and all that because they're not in Swap Force technically this time. So, without further ado, let's just get started. So, first off, we have Hoot Loop. Let's ruffle some feathers. So he is the magic swapper. I got to play him in E3. Really great looking figurine. So we'll put him on uh, the base showtime. So he's got a couple paths. So we've got for the top half, we have either the Dreamweaver path, which is where you get to shoot your uh, talisman or staff, whatever you want to call it, and it shoots a beam, kind of like Double Trouble's ma uh, magic beam, and it just goes crazy on one target and just annihilates them, man. It's just like and it's really, really powerful. So I really like that path a lot. And then we also have a Hypno Owl path, which is where you get better with your Hypno Eye powers and they cover a larger area. And honestly, both paths for the top are phenomenal. I really love them both. You've seen the PvP videos, hopefully. Um, they both really are terrific paths. If you want to go overpowered or OP'd in the um, nerdy community, you want to go with the Dreamweaver uh, path because that's the one that does the ridiculous damage because it doesn't leave. Like Once the staff hones in on the enemy, it just keeps going and it's kind of unfair actually. If you want to be more fair with your battles, go with the Hypno Owl path. They're both terrific though. And in the bottom half, we have the Telekinesis path or we have the Escape Artist path. And let's see. Charge the portal, damage is increased. I'm trying to remember. Oh, okay. I okay. The telekinesis path was decent. I don't really honestly remember much about that one. Hold the attack to charge the portal hole, release to do damage. Yeah, I think it had to do with just doing more damage around with the actual ring hole itself around. And then you have escape artist path. I think this is the one I like the most. This is the one where you can actually jump in. Like so, let's say. He's chilling in the air, fighting an enemy, and then a chompy or what have you. So remember when he goes, whoosh, 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 whoosh. he's got a ring here and a ring here. Well, when you have the escape bars path, you can go, whoosh, 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 whoosh. and you can pop from like either side ridiculously fast. So if you have skill and you have the uh, either, honestly, if you have either path at the top, you'll kill it. You go. And it's just really fast, man, and it's a great combo. Like, you have to be fast and quick on your feet to uh, use it to its best ability, but great combo nonetheless. So that is Hoot Loop. So there are my thoughts on him. Oh, yeah, um, and then overall, though, just the figurine in general, I really think he's a great figurine. Great addition to any uh, Magic Skylander team, hands down, a must-have. Great idea, very playful. I love the owl concept. It's really neat how they're doing that. Love the outfit. Just a really overall great character. So he definitely is a must buy. So, next in the guidebook, we've got Trap Shadow. The latest uh, magic swapper that I just got, Hide and Sleek. So here he is. Put him right there. I really love this guy. I don't even have to go into detail, but I will anyway. All right, so he's got for the top half the Feral Instincts path or the Trap Trickster path. The Feral Instincts path is the one where you hold the attack and you go for a swipe, and it can like knock enemies in the air. Incredible knockback ability, but also his claws get stronger, and that's like his key ingredient in my opinion because he's so fast with just clawing his enemies up. It's terrific. And then you've got the Trap Trickster path for more of the uh, more kind of fun kind of path. And that's where you get to really harness in uh, with your trap abilities. And they get stronger, they explode, and they do more damage, I believe. And uh, 
They're both quite good, honestly. I like the Feral Instincts path personally myself. I just love the claws because they're just really fun to watch. But the Trap Trickster, honestly, I feel you could do really good as well because if you heard my tip earlier in the PvPs, when you're attacking and clawing them up, just release the trap. You don't have to aim, just release it in front of the enemy and it just digs into them. So I'm thinking maybe if you do upgrade that because his claws already seem to be doing pretty good. So I don't know, let me know in the comments what you think of that one. So uh, for the top though, I would say honestly either, but I love the Feral Instincts path personally. In the bottom we've got the Shadow Combat path, which is where it increases his uh, Shadow Kick ability. That was a punch, but I can't really show my feet, I'm freaking um, at the table. But um, then we have the Prowler, Prowler path, which is where it increases his ability to like sneak around. He gets those little dark footprints and explodes and stuff afterwards. Prior alert path, honestly, better for story mode because the enemies are stupid and they won't realize where he is. But in PvP, you're going to realize where he is. So, I honestly would say uh, Shadow Combat for the bottom is, is a must. And then either one for PvP for the top. I think Feral Instincts is the best one, but it's up to you. Overall rating, though, I love him, man. Like, Trap Shadow is a must-have as well for the Magic guys. Not just because he's a Swap Horse guy, but he is... A powerhouse, man. He's incredibly powerful, incredibly fast, some serious uh, speed when he like cuts into his enemies, and he's got the traps for range. He's a very well versatile character, and he's a must-have for any Skylander collector, in my opinion. So next up, we'll go to Dune Bug. Here he is. Bzzz, can't beat the beetle. So, yeah, he's like a Scottish beetle or whatever, but he's a scarab beetle. Love the detail, I've been over that before, the paint job is just beautiful. Um, so, let's get right to the path slope. So we've got Scarab Sage Path, which is where he uh, gets to increase his energy ball attack with the staff. Honestly, not my favorite. I really think it's kind of lame overall and crappy. And then you have Dune Mage, though, which is where you get to increase the ball you get to also um, get the new golden armor, which a lot of people may not like, just kind of like Pop Thorn may like his new armor, he may not, but it gives you armor regardless. And then he's got that pixie attack with his sparkly wings move, which I love, where it shoots the uh, pixie dust behind him, which I think is really, really useful for PvP. So, I definitely would say the Dune Mage path is a must-have for Dune Bog. Now, overall rating for him in general, though, um, I don't know, honestly... He's decent, like he's good for story mode, like he can roll them all up in that energy sphere and that's really awesome and very helpful, like he even gets the guys with the shields and stuff, he's great for that. But PvP, I found him very boring, honestly. But um, so for story mode, yeah definitely a must have, he's good but he doesn't have a lot of health, I died pretty fast with him, but that was nightmare mode also. But um, yeah if you want him for PvP, not the best choice in my opinion, so... I'm going to say an alright one. You can have him. You don't have to have him. I would say you can with you can make do without him. He looks really cool. I personally just want to buy him all because my channel is pretty based on Skylanders at the moment. But, yeah, I mean, so that's my review on Doombug. Is he's just, he's a maybe. You don't have to have him. You can have him if you want. He's not a must-have, though, in my opinion. So... Next up in the guidebook, we have Super Gulp Pop Fizz. So here he is. The potion of the potion! There he is. With his humongous new Wow Pal ability. So we'll place him right there. Alright, so we've either got the Mad Scientist Path or the Best of the Beast Path. Honestly, I find both to be great. Like, I'm not kidding. That's why I own a couple Pop Fizzes. I have the Light Core one and the regular one because... I need to try both out. They're both really remarkable. It's honestly the player, I think, that makes them. Uh, the Mad Scientist is a lot of fun because you get to mix the potions and really have them uh, mess around with each other and find mixed effects. And also you get to shoot three potions at once, which is pretty useful. I love the acid attack personally, so I think for me that path is my favorite. But then, best of the beast, the beast depending on which one you use, is incredibly useful too. The only problem is it takes a little time to get into the mode and the mode also becomes undone in PvP. Like it runs out. And there's no enemies for you to uh, recharge the, the uh, bar in the arena. So that's a downfall there. 
the Wow Pal was pretty cool. I mean, it wasn't amazing, but it was cool. I mean, it was a huge bottle just shooting. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was kind of cool, but, yeah, I, I like the Mad Scientist one personally, but they're both really terrific paths. Um, for, uh, overall review, I'd say Pop Fizz is a must-have. He's an incredibly unique character. I love the voice acting. I love the whole potion concept. It's soda. Like, that's so playful and fun and friendly. Uh, the Wow Pal... You don't need them with the Wow Pow, honestly. You can, you cannot. I love my Pop Fizz even without the Wow Pow. But I definitely think he's a must-have, regardless. So, Mega Gulp, uh, Super Gulp Pop Fizz, definitely. is a good choice for your Magic Skylanders. Then we've got Mega Ram Spyro. All fired up! There he is. Really ugly looking guy. I'm sorry, Toys for Bob and all them, but... He's a ridiculously ugly looking figurine. Um, so yeah, packs wise we've got Cheap Burner Path, which is where it increases the fire. And uh, honestly I never really liked Cheap Burner ever. But then um, then you have the Blitz Spyro Path, which is where he increases his horns and his ramming ability. I personally like that better. And because of his new Wow Pal, I feel that goes hand in hand with his um, Blitz Spyro Path, to be honest. So, honestly, that's the path I would choose, is Blitz Spyro. I think that's a lot of fun. And the fireballs get old really fast. Um, Wild Pal's decent. Kind of annoying to pull off sometimes. So, honestly, for that review factor, I would say he's not a must-have either. Like, his Wow Pal is really not that amazing. And his Wild Pal from Series 2 kind of sucked, too, to be honest. Spyro, they're not really, in my opinion, really doing anything with him that's making him just a monster. Maybe I'm wrong, say in the comments, what have you, but honestly, I wouldn't say he's a must-have to go out and buy, like, right away. He just, he's alright, you know? So take him or leave him. And then we've got... Star Strike. Shoot for the stars. What's up? It's good. There's Star Strike. So we have either the Stargazer Path, which now you get the uh, massive explosive star to fall from the sky, which I think is incredibly useful because it has like this golden ball come down from the sky and go and also you get to shoot more powerful stars and your star fall can be used twice now so you can have two golden things going and you can also reflect those uh, energy balls being dropped from the stars and it's really useful. You have to be a bit strategic to use her, though. She's not an easy character to figure out. And you have Cosmic Reflector, which we get to um, increase the whole projectile thing. And we get to deflect it four more times to make it grow larger, which is fun as well. But honestly, I like the Stargazer one better. I just think that whole uh, spewing down of golden stars from the sky for a, like a freebie move is just a must-have. So I think the Stargazer path overall is definitely one of the better ones. Um, yeah, you can agree to disagree, whatever. Um, figure reading overall, kind of like most of the magic, um, she's not really a must-have. She's cool and stuff, but I don't know. She, I, like, I don't really play her much, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. It's cool design stuff, neat ideas, but I just yeah, she's not one of my favorites. So there's Star Strike. And then, the guidebook does not have these guys, so i got to bring them up. So we've got my boy, Voodoo. Everyone knows he's been one of my top eights for a long time. He is the uh, first Magic Skylander, one of the first ones in the uh, Spire's Adventure game, the first installment. And they got rid of him for Pop Fizz, but whatever. Pop Fizz is pretty great as well. So Voodoo has either the Elementalist Path, which is tremendous for story mode. He gets all these new uh, bonuses with his electrical energy powers and stuff, which is incredibly useful for destroying enemies, not necessarily PvP. And then you've got the Martyr Path, man, which I love for PvP because you have so many combos that come with it, and they're incredibly useful. And the Grappling Hook, the Zipline Axe, dude, that is like his go-to thing. You claw onto the enemy in PvP and just hack away at him with the combos, and, ah, oh, dude, he is... A monster, man. I'm really surprised they didn't remake him. I guess because he was overpowered from the first one. But Voodoo rating, 
a must buy. I don't know if you can even find them anymore, to be honest. You probably can. Toys R Us is like stocking all the old ones. So, Voodoo, though, definitely a must buy, in my opinion. Great uh, Magic Skyliner. It's probably one of the strongest hands down in there. And then what we got here? Let's get Wrecking Ball up. Alright, so we have Series 2 Wrecking Ball right here is the next one. You probably all know what I'm going to say with him. I don't like him as it is, but I'll put him down and give him a review regardless, be fair. So, his two paths, you've got Total Tongue, which increases his tongue abilities. Great for story mode and useful to like pick apart enemies and stuff. Terrible for PvP. Incredibly useless for PvP. Then you have Ultimate Spinner, also decent for story mode, but it kind of sucks for PvP as well because it's incredibly hard to move around with. Even with his new Disco Wow Pal ball attack they give him, he's still like ridiculously hard to use in PvP and like the game in general. I'm just really irritated with him anymore because they're not doing much to make him easily accessible to use and it's, it's really ticking me off. So Wrecking Ball, in my opinion, is not a must-buy. I really don't like him overall. Um, but the uh, Ultimate Spinner definitely is the superior path. But he's incredibly hard to control, so I get frustrated because you can't really have him go slow and then, like maybe speed up. I think that'd be a lot cooler if you could control that. There's an idea right there, Activision, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I honestly I would not buy Wrecking Ball. I do not like him. And then finally, we've got the Magic Giant. These things were awesome, man. My dad went, waited in line at, for Toys R Us, um, at Toys R Us, to get her for me when I was at college, which was really great. I love you for that and all the other stuff you've done for me. Um, but So she's got two paths. We've got Swords of Might. Originally, that was my best path that I liked for, but I'm learning it's more effective for story mode because, yes, increases her sword, she gets the combos and stuff, but the combos kind of suck overall, let's be honest. She's very boring, just slashing around the swords, and the one sword attack, it like just does its own thing. It won't even aim at the enemy half the time, so it's kind of irritating because it's a big gamble kind of path. Then you've got the ancient Dejin magic. So you get the orbs that do increased damage, the bottle rockets do more damage, and then also your bottle becomes stronger and faster. And people were telling me that if you spam her uh, perfume attack and put enemies to sleep, you can really do a lot of damage with the rocket path. So it seems like the ancient uh, Dejin magic path is the superior one because you also got the increased orbs that can fire. So I definitely would say the ancient Dejin um, magic path for sure. Ninjini overall, I think a must-have. I think you should own every giant, I'm not going to lie. I just think they're great figurines, incredibly unique. The whole concept of Samurai Genie, like, who thought of that? They did. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say definitely get her as well. So, thank you so much for watching, everyone. This was my first uh, Skylanders Element Path Guide review overall kind of thing. So, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Have a great day. And take care. Peace.